Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, April 7th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, federal snipers train their sights on a nature-watching family. Then, a former gun shop owner warns of more ATF tyranny. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Like if having an open border is like being a whore. America is the biggest whore on the planet. We're having sex with 200 guys a day lined up around the block. Well, in two stories that are developing today, we see how freedom is dying and how Agenda 21 is going to be rolled out. This is a situation that is developing in Nevada. As Paul Joseph Watson pointed out very early in the day, armed feds prepare for a showdown with a Nevada cattle rancher. This is a possible Ruby Ridge style standoff brewing in Nevada where dozens of armed federal agents are closing in on a cattle rancher over claims that he allowed his cows to graze illegally on government land and endangered a protected species of tortoise. Vowing to take a stand for your freedom and your liberty, Bundy says that he is prepared to be killed as authorities surround a 600,000 acre section of public land. As a result, they say that he is violating a 1993 Bureau of Land Management ruling which changed grazing rights in order to protect the endangered desert tortoise. Now we're seeing this everywhere. We're seeing the government bureaucracies writing their own laws, using their own SWAT teams and militarized police forces, taking you into their own courts where you do not get a jury of your peers, where you have no presumption of innocence. And we're gonna take a look at that in more depth later on, but let's go back to this story. Bundy's refusal to recognize federal authority over the land under dispute and his failure to pay tens of thousands of dollars in grazing fees stems from his assertion that his family history trumps the bureaucracy. He said, my forefathers have been up and down the Virgin Valley ever since 1877. My rights are before the BLM even existed. Well, you know what? All of our rights predate not only the Bureau of Land Management, but the federal government itself. The federal government was created to protect our rights not to take away our property rights, our privacy rights, and to come against us, treating us lower than a desert tortoise, lower than a Houston toad. That's the protected species in this area. Now, going on with the story, they say armed agents are forming a military-like staging area to prevent anyone from approaching the area. Now, in an update that happened later today, Paul Joseph Watson followed up on this and said, federal snipers train their guns on a family for merely filming the cattle. Federal snipers with the Bureau of Land Management trained guns on members of the same family yesterday after they dared to stop and take video footage of cattle outside the bounds of a designated, quote, First Amendment area, unquote, before arresting one of the men for noncompliance. Now, they're rounding up his cattle, and so they were filming it. They said, we were not on the land. We were on the road. None of the family members were armed, but as soon as Dave Bundy began filming the cattle in the distance, 11 BLM vehicles, each with two agents, arrived and surrounded him, 22 guys. They also had four snipers on the hill above us, all trained on us. We were doing nothing besides filming in the area. The family were told to leave the area via loudspeaker because they had violated the crudely established First Amendment area. Now, this is essentially what is happening to all of us folks. We are all being surrounded and outnumbered by a massive bureaucracy. Look at this next story. This is not a rancher. This is just a woman going to a store that the DEA decided that because she's going to this hydroponic store, maybe she's using it to grow marijuana indoors. A woman who was SWAT teamed at gunpoint after shopping at a garden store. This is in Illinois, this was the DEA. Now you've got one lady. How many government Stasi agents came to her house? Actually, nine. Four DEA agents and five local cops. This happened last October, it's just now being revealed. The raid was a culmination of a month-long stakeout during which feds searched through her trash, monitored her electricity usage, spied on her activities in general, all because they thought she might be growing marijuana. She said they had a gun pointed at me and said, are there any illegal substances in your house? Well, basically, I think the most illegal substance in her house were the jackbooted thugs who had no right to be there. Her attorney is demanding that the case be thrown out of court because they did find a small amount of marijuana, nine grams of marijuana, so they charged her with a misdemeanor a misdemeanor, okay? Not even under their drug laws is that a serious crime. 
He said the search warrant was bogus because they had no reason to search for her because all she did was go to a store. But I want to point out one more thing from the story. The DEA agents also managed to get a hold of her electric bills and claimed that they were consistently higher than her neighbors. And that was the basis of arguing for the search warrant. Think about that. If they're looking at her electric bills and saying that they're higher than her neighbors, that means they're looking at the neighbor's bills too. Probably not too difficult to do with all the smart meters that are out there invading everyone's privacy. We have to get beyond the left-right paradigm spectrum. We have to understand that everybody, whether they're a rancher or whether they're a housewife, is under attack, under surveillance from a government that has slipped the bounds of the Constitution. We are all at jeopardy. When I look at this First Amendment zone that they created for a rancher on his own property, okay, as they're stealing his property from him, I'm reminded of the First Amendment, the quote-unquote free speech zones that they put at political conventions now. You can go to an area that is out of sight and away from the politicians and the cameras if you want to exercise your constitutionally specifically protected First Amendment rights to address your grievances, to protest in public. If we allow them to do that to occupy, if we allow them to do that to the Tea Party, they're going to do it to the rancher. They're going to do it to the woman who is buying hydroponic supplies. This is where we need to come together. Whether we're on the left or the right, it's a phony spectrum. And we're going to have more about how they create that phony spectrum using people like Al Sharpton. An amazing revelation about that later on in the show. Now, look at how we're under attack. I mentioned before that they create their own laws. They have their own courts. They have their own militarized police. And you have no rights. You have no presumption of innocence. You have no jury. Look at this. Under attack, depth of federal arms race should surprise and shock the citizenry. This is from watchdog.org. As they point out a particular case, they said four federal agents carrying sidearms with drug-sniffing dogs descended on the Taos Ski Valley in what was called a, quote, saturation patrol. Guess what? They were from the U.S. Forest Service. And then they go down and they list just some of the agencies that now have their own militarized police force. Some of these agencies were the ones that were getting massive amounts of ammunition, as we pointed out, looking at these federal contracts. You got the U.S. Department of Education, the Bureau of Land Management, the Department of the Interior, the U.S. Postal Service. I hope they don't go postal on us. The National Park Service, the Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They all have SWAT teams. Now, there was a case a couple of years ago where the Washington Post looked at a request for purchase from the Department of Education where they wanted all the SWAT team equipment, body armor, shotguns. And they said, what is the Department of Education asking for that for? Well, it turned out the reason they were asking for that was because within less than a year, they went to an individual's house, drug him and his children out in the middle of the night, sprawled down on the ground, shotguns to their heads. Why? because they were looking at his, for his estranged wife who owed a student loan from college. This is what these people are doing. This is why they're buying billions of hollow point, rounds of hollow point ammunition. They're not using it for target practice. It's many times more expensive than target ammunition. It is banned by Geneva Convention to use against foreign soldiers. It can only be used against you and I. We have no more rights in this country. How much worse can it get? Look at this story. The Navy is creating drones with minds of their own. This is a story that was broken this Saturday from the Wall Street Journal, and they were rolling this out on Saturday. This is a Navy officials unveiling new technology. This is this last Saturday that with a push of a button allows helicopters, manned or unmanned, to choose their own routes, take off and land. This is a five-year, $100 million program, and they say that over the next decade, the military is aiming to create autonomous drones that can help soldiers carry out night raids, search oceans for trouble, and select targets for attack. They're not going to be helping soldiers do that. They're going to be carrying out the raids. They're going to be searching. They're going to be targeting individuals, perhaps you. Perhaps they might think that you're a drug dealer because you went to a hydroponic store, so they stick a drone on you. Now look at this. They call this a truly leap ahead technology. This is a quote from Ad, uh, Admiral Clunder. He said, what we're talking about here is full-size helicopters. We're talking about delivering 5,000 pounds of cargoes, cargo. And he said the helicopters can choose their own routes, pick landing sites, and change their destination if they spot unexpected obstacles that emerge at the last moment. 
Now, listen to what they're saying here. We're starting to move into an autonomous regime, and that's going to have hugely disruptive effects. That is uh, the executive director at the Center for New American Security. He says, I would almost call it a revolution. Now, understand that when they talk about disruptive effects, disruptive technology, when they talk about a revolution, they think that's a good thing. They see that as a positive effect. You and I are the ones who are going to be disrupted. And the revolution is a revolution against our form of government and the Constitution. One more quote from this article. Autonomous drones that require less human oversight could also take some strain off of the Pentagon as it cuts back the size of the military to deal with budget cuts. That's right. Who needs compartmentalization when you can get a handful of tyrants and their minions to control the entire population through the leveraged technology that they have with autonomous drones? It sounds like a movie that's just been released, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at how they are attacking guns, for example, because that is ultimately our last line of offense, def defense. And it is something that even though it is a gun issue, every time they come at our rights, they use many of the same techniques. And of course, this is Common Core. Common Core approved textbooks are being used to rewrite the Second Amendment, reports the New American. This is the way they report about the Second Amendment in these Common Core textbooks. The people have the right to keep and bear arms in a state militia. Okay, they say the government of the United States is currently revisiting the Bill of Rights. They have determined that it is outdated and may not re remain in its current form any longer. And then this, the amendment states that people have the right to certain weapons, providing that they re register them and that they have not been in prison. The founding fathers included this amendment to prevent the United States from acting like the British who had tried to take weapons away from the columnist, okay? And then finally, now in an interview, Fox News asked a superintendent of an Illinois middle school about this and he said, what happens with the right to bear arms in the context of 2014 is the right to bear arms in reality, not as it's written in the constitution, but in reality is in any way abridged and the answer is yes. And in some places, by the need to register guns or to register gun owners and so on. There you go. Well, that's Common Core. And that's the way they attack the Second Amendment. With double think, with propaganda, with subjectivity. That's why Bill Gates puts $150 million behind Common Core. Now, of course, the ATF will also use intimidation against gun store owners to get what they want. And that is records on gun purchasers. We reported back in 2012 that the ATF was requesting records of gun owners in Alaska, and that's one of many stories that we've run on it. But on today's Alex Jones radio show, we had a former pawn shop owner in Iowa. And I say former because he got a, had to close his business because of Obamacare. But he talked about how the ATF intimidated him for the records that they were not legally allowed to have. We're going to have that report from Alex Jones radio show right after the break, so stay tuned.